Let's check if things here. Yeah, okay, that's all good. Um, oh, hello, Mariel. I know you're watching. That's nice. Um, okay. Um, first of all, I want to say thank you for watching yesterday. I've had nearly a thousand people watch the, um, sorry, not yesterday. It was two days ago, wasn't it? It was on Wednesday. So I've already had uh, a thousand people watching. So that was really nice. And uh, keep the comments coming. Um, let me know what you want to see. Let me know what you want to know more about. Um, I'm going to try and build this a little bit by thinking about what you guys might have at home at the moment. Um, but really, the more ideas you give me about things you want to know, the, uh, the better that's going to be, um, because uh, it will help me tailor things accordingly. I'm, I'm not going to do um, I'm not going to do this chronologically. So I am going to do another uh, class today about uh, portraits. But I think on Saturday or Sunday, um, where are we today? Friday, right? So yeah, on Sunday, um, I'm going to do something different and then different again. But we will come back to that. Um, I don't want to just tackle like one whole topic together because I think that will get a bit boring. Um, and I want to kind of pace this differently. I want to try and do things for different people um, uh, and different requirements. So hopefully that will make some sense um and uh yeah but keep letting me know um what you'd what you'd like to know um about all right um so the first thing i'd like to do is i'd like to do a little bit of a recap on what we worked on um last time on um on the portrait um exercise um so let's see is it going to work yeah, okay. So um, the reason I want to recap is because I think uh, some people said to me it was quite difficult to make a connection between the can of baked beans, which I no longer have because uh, that was my supper that evening, um, and a head. And then also I noticed a few people, um, there was maybe a little bit of um, misunderstanding about that center line. So I just want to go over that again. So let's think about the baked bean can. I'm going to draw it a bit heavier this time because I realize it didn't come through too well before. So there's the baked bean can. And then I was talking about that center line, right? And what I saw quite a lot happen, and then there's the line for the, um, the join. What I saw quite a lot happening was this, where people were doing kind of ignoring a little bit what I said about where the eye sockets go. So I was seeing quite a lot of this. I was seeing, sorry, let me get the right color. Um, I was seeing eye sockets up here. And then people are kind of following this all right. So the nose down there and the mouth there. But really what I hoped I'd see is the eye sockets here. Okay, so that's where the eye sockets sit on that center line. And I know that's counterintuitive, um, I know that's really difficult to imagine because I think we always think that our eyes are much closer to the top of the head, but really that's where the eyes need to be. So then you have the nose somewhere there and then the mouth here, and then you can add the rest of the head through there with the hair and stuff. Okay, so that really, if you're doing that again, really think about that center line because I, I think that was maybe a little bit difficult. Um, to make the connection between the bean, can, uh, the bean can and somebody's head. But look, maybe that's just me. Maybe that's how I see the world. I'm always trying to make connections between things that are difficult to understand, like the human head, and things that are sort of easier to understand, like a baked bean can, and trying to connect those two things together. So um, I hope that was helpful but I can also understand maybe if it was a little bit difficult to um, get your head around and look nobody gets this right the first time so you must must practice so um, I think nobody makes amazing art unless it's by chance and fluke um, the very first time so um, if it didn't quite work out um, try it again uh, don't rush it go in nice and uh, go at your own pace and really try and think about the things that we talked about in that in that last tutorial Okay, um, let's um, let's move on now to something something that I want to do today. So that's the recap, pretty much over and done with. Um, let me see if there's any more people that I need to say hello to. 
I need to say hello to Damien and to Paul. Hello. Right. Um, okay, so what I asked you to look at this time was a ball. I asked you to find a ball, which hopefully um, is going to lead us to the next part, which is about thinking about within that head, we have two eyeballs. And I've been trying to people asking a lot about likeness how you get a good likeness when it comes to um, excuse me drawing a portrait and i think the key really there is in the eyes i'll work on likeness a little bit more in another tutorial but for now let's just think about eyeballs because i think we all know and probably you see this with your kids, how they draw. As we develop our drawing skills from very early age, um, whilst we uh, go through primary school and then at secondary school, GCSE, there's a real kind of pattern that a lot of children's drawings adhere to in terms of maybe when kids are really young, the eyes are massive compared with the other features, almost like bigger than the whole body sometimes. Um, I guess that's because that's what little kids really um, focus on. And then maybe as we move through school, eyes become something which are a bit like um, you get a formula for drawing eyes. So maybe you look at cartoons or something and then eyes uh, develop from that. Um, and I want us to go back a little bit and really think about, first of all, the eyeball um, being something kind of horrible, I guess. Um, but also, let's start with, with a ball. So um, I'm going to go back to the iPad again. So I'm going to start, let me see if I can share the screen with you again. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, is that going to work? It always lags a little bit. Okay, so um, I asked you to find a ball. Uh, an orange will work, um, a football will, will work, tennis ball. Um, I think a ping pong ball is what I had to hand. Uh, I love table tennis. Um, and also it kind of makes it a bit easier because you can see the shadow. Now, if we think about, if we think about the eyeball or the eye um, having many components, right? So it has the eyeball, it has the pupil, it has the iris, it has eyelashes, eyebrow and eyelids. All those components go together to um, give us the eye. Um, and again, <laughs> because of how I think about um, things, always bearing in mind something three-dimensional, um, because again, it's that translation between the three-dimensional world and the two-dimensional canvas or piece of paper, and always trying to translate that. So when I'm asking you to get a baked bean can, or in this case, a ball, I guess I'm trying to bridge that connection a little bit between um, the three-dimensional world and your sheet of paper or your tablet or whatever canvas, maybe whatever it is you're, you're drawing on. But for, for this, really, you just need um, some pencils and a piece of paper. So um, make sure you've got that. Um, right, let's have a look. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to draw... Um, I guess if I was doing this differently, I'd have a ball in front of me and then I'd have a piece of paper. But for the sake of this tutorial, it kind of works better if I just do everything on the iPad, um, just because um, I know that photographing or filming a piece of paper with some pencil on it, it just doesn't come out very well. So um, the first thing that I'm going to do is I am going to um, use, what's this like? Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a patch of space in which I can draw draw the ball. So ignore the background a little bit. Um, and I'm going to use green, which I'll explain why in a bit more detail later. But I've got a space there which I can start to um, start to draw the ball on. Okay. So um, I've got that and then I'm going to go back to a um, a pencil. Um, and I'm going to start thinking about replicating that ball. Okay, so just spend a bit of time drawing, drawing a ball, drawing a sphere. So as I said, a hard ball deck won't really work because it will be the wrong, um, it will be the wrong, um, it will be the wrong form. But any kind of spherical object, make sure there's some good strong light coming. So here we can see that the light. Um, 
if I put another layer there, maybe you can see it better. The light is coming from, from, oops, from this direction. Okay, so we can see that here is the highlight and here is the darkest place um, where it's shaded away from the, uh, away from the light. So I'm just going to concentrate for a few minutes on trying to get a good likeness of the, the ball that I've got. So I've got some shading here. I think I need to not go so quickly. I've got a tendency to, to rush this, um, but hopefully um, I'll make sure that um, I really concentrate on making the sphere look three-dimensional because that's going to really help us when we move on to the eye part. So spend a good bit of time trying to, you don't have to do this, you can do this in, I, th I think you could do this in any, any, any way. You could do this through, um, uh, with just monochrome with black and white pencil, you could do it with paint, um, you could do it with colored pencil like I'm doing. Um, there's lots of ways that you could start to think about making that, um, a three-dimensional, recreating three dimensions through um, whatever media you choose. Um, that's starting to look okay. Um, maybe that bit there needs a little bit of change. How's that looking? It's not too bad, is it? It's all right. Um, okay, so that's the first stage really, is trying to just familiarize yourself with trying to render, and by render, I mean um, recreate the form um, in any medium you want. So I think it would work really well uh, black and white with graphite pencil. Um, it would work well with pastel or charcoal even, um, or you can also do that with paint. So just first of all, think about that eyeball. Okay, so once you've rendered that, um, I'm gonna move this over now and I'm gonna think about that eye. So that's the picture that I took earlier. And I'm going to, can you see that? Okay. I'm going to start thinking about recreating the form of the eyeball and the eyelid and the eyebrow and the eyelashes, um, all based around this um, eyeball, which fits in a socket. So do you remember when I was talking about the um, when I was talking about the um, the can and the the sockets for the eyes, and then in in there, you start to think about not not starting to think about the bit that we look at, which is the pupil and iris, but thinking about a socket. So I think. If you, the first thing I think is kind of important to think about is that the eyeball fits into a socket. Okay, so the first stage is really getting this eyeball right. Then I think the next thing that I'll start to think about is the iris and pupil. Think about the relationship between how big that might be and where that might sit on that eyeball. So I guess everybody's um, eyeballs and eyes are different colors and different, different shades and stuff. I think probably the proportion between the iris and the eyeball is fairly standard in a lot of people who do. It says your internet connection is unstable. I hope that doesn't mean something bad happens. Let me just check. It's okay. Okay. Um, let me know if something something goes wrong. Okay, so the first thing I'm thinking about is I have a spherical surface and the iris and the pupil sits on that. Again, do you remember what I was saying the other day about um, uh, a face not being a flat plane, but it being a three-dimensional shape, which is why I went to the baked bean cab. It's really similar um, here where I'm thinking about the um, the iris and the pupil sitting on this curved surface. So really the first thing to think about is trying to get that right, trying to get the, the iris looking like it's sitting on that, that cur curved surface. So depending on where you're looking, if you're looking straight ahead, it's probably a circle. 
But if you're looking to one side or your sitter is looking to one side, that um, the circle is going to change it to an ellipse as it moves around the, the ball. I suppose I can show you that by drawing something actually on the ball. So if I draw this onto, that's a way of showing you, let's go back to the full screen. So if I show you that there, then as somebody looks the other way, Oh, hang on, I'll go the other way so it doesn't go against the, it's got a bit of reflection. That, that circle kind of changes shape to a different ellipse as it goes round the corner. So there it's a circle, and then there it starts to become an ellipse as it goes round, okay? So again, that's just thinking about things in a more three-dimensional way. Mm -hmm. Let's go back to this. Okay, so we've, we've got this, we've got the eyeball, um, and I'm going to start thinking about the getting the colour right, because the first thing that I want to do in this exercise is just focus on the eye and just try and get the eye right. Um, and for speed, I'm just picking up the colours, but um, you can also have a palette of colours like that ready. Um, which is something else that I prepared. So once, once that part is looking a little bit, um, looking a little bit better, um, I feel like that's starting to uh, look like the right kind of color. Um, so now I have almost like a disconnected eyeball, which is why I started with that ping pong ball. Um, and thinking about that eyeball sitting in a socket. So once you're fairly happy with that, I think we've got to start thinking about the eyelids um, because they're really going to define the shape of the eye. And once you have that, um, then you can work on the details a little bit further. So if we, if we start off and think about where, I guess around there is where the, um, the, the center, the, the left-hand side of the eye might start. And then, <coughs> excuse me, then think about the eyelid moving over the three-dimensional surface and where it interrupts the oval of the eye and then where it stops. So really, really looking carefully at the shape of the upper eyelid. We can work on that more later and then thinking about the kind of shape that the bottom of the eyelid makes. It's probably not quite right. It just passes just underneath and then meets somewhere there. So I'd probably be looking at the whites of my eyes and looking at the, the proportion of, and the shape of the white shape in relation to the, the iris and the pupil. Um, so once I've got that right, or, or what seems to be right, I kind of still feel like things need to go round the corner a little bit. So I probably need to get a bit of a bigger pen and I want to think about this socket that the, the eye fits in. So it feels like there's a brow that happens somewhere here. And then that comes down to where my nose is. So I'm not working on everything and getting everything right after the eyeball. I'm kind of thinking about putting in a little bit of structure and kind of understanding that here there's some sort of socket that these kind of bony bits here and where my, where my eyebrow sits. And maybe I need a little bit more tone in there. So tone is light and dark. I'm thinking about trying to see where the light and dark is and thinking about the eyelid moving over. I think also it's really good to, um, it, you know, it, it's good to focus on details, but when you're drawing a portrait, it's also really good to focus on, uh, on getting everything kind of in place in terms of 
the, the head sitting on shoulders, where the hands are, um, what the hair's doing, what's in the background. So this is really, really just thinking much more closely about detail. Um, but I think sometimes uh, a portrait can be really overwhelming. So what I'm trying to do here is just break apart some of the smaller parts and smaller features so that you just really focus on one thing and try and get that right. So that when you do another portrait again, you're not sort of using a shorthand or using something which you think is right, but um, maybe isn't quite um, um, really what's there, you know, and, and really paying attention to observation. So I think by doing this, it really allows us to look really carefully at one particular area. So I'm going to put a bit more, a bit more colour um, in to give it a little bit more and really think about what's happening there. So I'm, I'm constantly looking at the eye that I'm studying and um, thinking about um, how I can, what kind of shape is that? Get rid of some of that green now because I think that's getting a bit, a bit overpowering. Trying to concentrate. It's quite difficult to talk. I always find that I need to um, really, really concentrate hard when I'm um, when I'm drawing. I've always found that I can't um, I can't really think about anything else. So I I don't ever find drawing kind of therapeutic and relaxing. Um, I really love doing it, but I never really find that it's something that um, I can relax. I feel like I need a lot of I need a lot of energy and a lot of concentration to um to get it right but i suppose what i do understand is when people say oh art's really therapeutic i think what that means is probably you concentrate on doing the drawing or the painting that you're doing and that stops you thinking about other things so if you are um uh worrying about other stuff it's difficult to focus on anything else and you know I, I guess a lot of people are worried at the moment um and i'm i'm actually finding that uh, at the moment my brain is not terribly um is not terribly creative or imaginative um but what i am thinking a lot about is problem solving and a lot of drawing is about problem solving it's trying to think about how the problem uh, can be resolved of translating something three-dimensional onto a two-dimensional surface um, and uh, three-dimensional by that I mean reality right 3d form onto whatever surface that you're uh, drawing or painting on canvas paint uh, uh, tablet or piece of paper um, so I kind of get what people mean when they say that they um, uh, they think art is therapeutic so but for a long time I kind of didn't really understand what what that was um, and I, but I, th I think what I think what I understand it to me now is that um, yeah, just that it allows you to concentrate on something else other than whatever it is you're thinking about. Um, how's that looking? It's looking a little bit strange. I think I need some darker, darker color around here. So in terms of level of detail, I'm not really picking out individual um, individual eyelashes, right, or eyebrows. I'm trying to work in a little bit more general way by, let's get that really small, by just focusing on color, patches of color, and hopefully that will create some kind of um, form which makes sense when it's put all together. And I think something that 
I get asked a lot is like, when do I stop? Right. So when, when have you done enough on your, um, on your drawing? And I think that is really, that's, that's such a critical moment when you know that, you know, things are looking all right, but you don't want to do too much because um, you might end up killing it. Um, right. I can see some problems here. I think the iris is a little bit too big. So I'm going to make that a little bit smaller. Um, what else do I need? I think that colour on the forehead could be a bit lighter. So let's talk about the green colour. The green is a sort of interesting discovery. Um, and I think a lot of people will start with uh, a white sheet of paper and a white canvas. And I think it can be really beneficial to um, start with another color um, and another tone, definitely. Because if you start with bright white, you don't really have anywhere to go. You can't make that, that piece of paper or that canvas any more white than it already is. So a really good trick is just to start with a neutral color. Because if you start with gray, for example, um, you can go darker, but you can also go lighter. And if you start with a white canvas, you can't really um, go anywhere lighter than that. Um, so that's really why um, it's, yeah, it's good to start with a different color. I think with, um, with this color, if you think about this bright green, for me, it's a really, really difficult color to work with. You kind of want to cover it up a lot, but also our skin tone um, or my skin tone is the complementary of that. So anything that's a sort of warm brown color um, is going to really, really clash and stand out against the green. So what that will do, it will really push the colors forward and um, it will make your painting or your drawing really, really come alive in a way that white might not do because white's got a habit of kind of flattening everything. So, uh, you know, a, a way to try this is really just to experiment with different backgrounds and then work um, with those flesh tones on those. But think about what the complementary color um, to your skin tone is. So you could maybe work with um, uh, light blue or uh, bright green or bright blue, turquoise, those kind of colors. They're going to work very, very well with browns and purples and oranges because we're starting to go to the complementary colors. So the other side of the color spectrum. Um, I don't know how I've got on really with that. Um, I guess what I wanted to do there was to draw an eye which was a bit bigger. So I wasn't just copying um, what I had there. Um, in an ideal world, I wouldn't copy from a photograph. I would always look at the subject live. I think it's a bit easy copying from um, an, an already flat image, but I think maybe this works better um, just for you guys seeing this uh, on an iPad, as I said earlier, rather than it being filmed on a piece of paper. Um, so just before I finish, I think, um, yeah, think about the sphere. Think about um, the eyeball. And so draw a really good sphere, first of all, with some good shading, some good light and dark. Think about um, where the light is hitting your face, where the light is hitting your eyeball. And think about that eye uh, socket and the eyeball fitting in that socket. Um, so I hope that was useful in terms of thinking about eyes in another way. So this is really the study of a detail of the face. So before it's about the overall head, getting the structure right, and this is about trying to get the detail right, but hopefully thinking about it in a slightly different way. Um, so um, what else can I say? I think that's pretty much about everything. Um, there's a lot more information on my YouTube and also on Instagram. Uh, today's Friday. I'm going to try and do another video on Sunday, but that's going to be really different. So that's probably going to be about a completely different topic. But please keep getting in touch with me about what you'd like to find out about. Uh, I hope that was useful. I hope you could um, 
make some progress. Please send me lots of pictures and lots of trials uh, and errors. Don't worry if you don't get it right the first time. Remember to keep going, keep practicing. Nobody gets it right the first time. Nobody's a genius. It's not about being perfect. It's just about trying to have a go. And I'm trying to uh, uh, get you to make connections between things in a new way. And I know that's probably a new thing for people, um, but that's just my way of how I see the world and how I try and connect things. So hopefully that's useful. And um, I really look forward to seeing you next time. And uh, keep all your uh, keep all your drawings. Okay, never ever throw anything away. So um, I'd like to see some disasters, and I'd like to see some successes. So. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed that um, and I will see you on Sunday. Okay, bye-bye.